All right, imagine this. You're browsing online and someone sends you a link. You click on it and the page tells you that you need to update your Chrome. You follow the instructions. First, you drag and drop the image into a new tab and then you click on this update Google Chrome link. Seems harmless, right? But here's what's actually happening. The drag and drop interaction isn't really updating anything. Instead, it's exploiting a vulnerability chain in Google's Chrome that gives attacker complete control over your browser and also the access to your local file system. What looked like a simple browser update now just became a system compromise. A portion of the video is sponsored by Snake. More on that at the end of the video. This really cool exploit was discovered by Matan. He's 17 years old and he's a security researcher from Israel. It all started when Matan was experimenting with a Chrome extension and discovered that by navigating to Chrome inspect URL, he could actually inspect the DevTools window itself. For those of you who are not familiar with what DevTools is, DevTools is a Chrome's inbuilt debugging suite that lets developers inspect web pages, debug JavaScript, monitor network performance, and analyze rendering behavior. What makes this particularly interesting is that the DevTools itself is just another web application built with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which means it can be inspected just like any other web page. This opens up a fascinating meta debugging scenario where one can use DevTools schema or protocol and inspect one of the DevTools pages. Essentially, Matan here was trying to debug the debugger itself. By the way, you can try to debug the debugger yourself if you visit this link. But since Chromium is open source, which powers Chrome and also Edge browser, he started digging a little bit deeper. While looking at the code, he noticed a parameter labeled WS. So investigating this a little bit further, he realized that he could specify any URL using this WS parameter, which stands for WebSockets, and the DevTools would establish a WebSocket connection back to the specified address. So this is essentially a legitimate feature designed for remote debugging purposes. Now he thought, what if we could connect to an attacker server? Well, you could, but what can you really do with this? Apparently, there's a simple protocol that the DevTools use to talk between the client and the server, and it's called Chrome DevTools Protocol. The protocol is organized into different domains like DOM, network, runtime, and so on, each defining various commands and events. So there are some interesting stuff you can do, like execute commands on your browser, or mess with security configurations, monitor networking, that sort of stuff. But it's all confined to the current DevTools session. You don't get any extra privileges or access beyond what DevTools normally has. There was one event that caught his attention, log.entry added. You can send this event from the attacker's remote server to the browser with fields like text and URL, and it would actually do a console log entry in the DevTools. The interesting bit, however, is that the URL becomes a clickable link. Since we control this URL, what if we set it to a JavaScript URI? Something as simple as this. For those of you who don't know about JavaScript URIs, there is simply a way to execute JavaScript code directly in the URL. Instead of linking to a web page, you can use this JavaScript protocol followed by your code. And when someone clicks on this link, the browser executes this JavaScript code instead of actually navigating to a specific page. Pretty slick. But there was a problem. The JavaScript URIs were not allowed by DevTools and you can't make them into a link. Here's the code responsible for that check. But if you look closely, there seems to be an oversight by the developers. They're just checking if the string starts with the JavaScript after doing a lowercase on it. But what this check misses is whether there are any white space characters like backslash R or backslash N embedded within the protocol itself. If you insert a new line, for example, anywhere between the word JavaScript, it will actually still execute the JavaScript URI because the browser internally normalizes these characters away. You can test this by creating a link that looks like this 
and here the XA embedded within the JavaScript, that's actually an HTML entity encoded new line character. Now, if you click on this link, it will trigger an alert. Pretty cool. Now we have a way to bypass the security check with the normalization trick. All we have to do is just set the URL and send it through the WebSocket connection. And when we click on it, it doesn't work. Why is that? Well, the devtools underscore app.html file has this line of code. That's CSP, Content Security Policy. We successfully did inject our JavaScript URI within the DevTools window, but it just wouldn't execute because the policy is stopping us. It prevents inline JavaScript execution from sources like the JavaScript URI. So almost all pages in DevTools bundle also have the CSP enabled, except for just one file, and that's called integration test runner.html. The developers did write the CSP line in the HTML file too, but the funny part is that it's, it's commented out. Yeah, lucky us. So if we change our target from DevTools app HTML to this new integration test HTML, it should work, right? Well, almost. When we try this, we get an error. The test file requires a valid URL parameter called inspect underscore test and it needs to be a valid URL. So you can supply anything like https example.com and it should just work. Now the moment of truth. We click on the JavaScript URI, boom, we do get an alert. The exploit did work, but it's uh, lacking some UX. So let's actually fix that. First of all, we can clearly see the JavaScript URI code. So users would be really suspicious about clicking on it in the first place. So a solution Matan found was that to simply add a bunch of uh, backslash R uh, characters before the JavaScript URI, and uh, this would actually make the URI too long to be displayed. So it will only show the end parts of the URI. To make this even more cleaner, he added some comments at the end of the JavaScript code so that only the innocent parts of the string gets shown to the user. A pretty clever social engineering trick. Also, when you open the DevTools window, it defaults to the Elements tab panel, but we can change that via the get parameter called panel, and we set it to console, and that should take care of it. Now, instead of simply popping an alert, let's take it up a notch. Let's read the contents of the passwd file. This can be done if you get a handle to the DevTools API object. He noticed that this object wasn't really there in the pages that were opened by the exploit window, but when he manually opened a new tab in the browser and navigated to some DevTools front-end page, this object was accessible. So this led him to think that this object might only be accessible in a tab which doesn't have any opener. So he made the exploit open the DevTools front-end URL, like the DevTools app HTML, in a new tab and manually set the tab opener to null and then refresh the tab. This trick actually worked and it actually gave him access to the DevTools API object, which is very powerful and having access to this would let us read local files and also get a universal XSS. In the DevTools API, there's actually a method called send message to the embedder. And, and also there's a bunch of other different messages types you can send. Uh, one of them is load network resource. You can specify any URL and it would actually load it. So if we specify something like file etsy passwd, we can actually read local files. Sweet. And by the way, there's actually a big issue we need to solve. We can't really navigate to the DevTools URL directly from a malicious website. The user would have to manually copy paste this link to the address bar and then press enter which is pretty unlikely to do by a user. So here comes the drag and drop trick. So when the user drags an element from the malicious web page to a new tab, it automatically navigates to the DevTools URL because we are overriding the data. All right, that was a lot. And let's actually summarize and put everything in order. So we start with the drag and drop interaction trick that we just talked about. 
to open up the DevTools URL with the integration test runner HTML as the target and this opens up in a new tab. This will have the WS parameter, which is the WebSocket parameter that connects back to the attacker's server. This server then emulates being a debugger and then sends a log entry with the JavaScript URI. The XSS works because we're actually bypassing Chrome's JavaScript URI check with a new line normalization and also skipping the CSP thanks to the commented out CSP. And then when the user clicks on the URI, we open the DevTools app HTML, set the opener to null and then reload the page. This somehow makes the DevTools API available. And then we can use the send message embedder on the DevTools API object itself to read local files. Pretty wild chain of vulnerabilities working all together. All right, let's actually run the exploit. We visit the page, drag and drop the icon, and we click on this update Chrome button, wait for it. And there goes my Etsy passwd file. Pretty cool. By the way, one can also get a universal XSS with this exploit meaning this privileged access to the DevTools will let the attacker inject any JavaScript into any website with your session, even though there's no XSS on the website itself. Pretty slick. And also this issue was reported a long time ago to the Chromium team, almost two years ago, and it was found in this version and was assigned with this CVE ID. Speaking of security vulnerabilities, if you're a developer, you're probably thinking about security in your own projects too. So while we can't really predict wild browser exploits like this one, most security issues actually come from everyday stuff like vulnerable dependencies, misconfigurations, or bugs in your own code. So today's sponsor Snake has a tool that will help you with this side of security. They do code scanning, dependency checking, container security, infrastructure as code, that kind of thing. I use their platform personally and they do some great work. It's actually free for individuals and small teams. So if that sounds useful, go check them out at sneak.co slash pwn function. Links will be down in the description. So back then, when I reached out to Matan as soon as he tweeted about this bug, this was right around the time when the Chromium team had just patched the vulnerability. Uh, Matan was really kind and helpful walking me through the bug. Uh, huge thanks to him for blowing my mind multiple times. Uh, thanks again. And the, the video was supposed to come out uh, a year ago, but ended up getting delayed for various reasons. And uh, even though this bug has been out for a while, I still think it's a really unique find. So I just wanted to share it with everyone. Uh, anyways, I'll leave all the relevant links down in the description, including the original report by Matan and his socials. So check them out. Thank you for the view and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.